So what is a tech camp? Tech camp is part of Secretary Clinton's Civil Society 2.0 initiative. And, and the big goal of the Secretary's initiative is to help educate civil society organizations around the world on 21st century technologies, to help empower them, to help make them more resilient in the face of some of the struggles that civil society organizations might have in today's climate. So for example, today in Jakarta we're talking about disaster relief, disaster risk management, and climate change. How can we use technologies to help empower these organizations to make them more resilient in the face of climate change and help prepare for the next disaster that comes to Indonesia? Hi, uh, I'm Kate Chapman with uh, the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. So my session was teaching uh, OpenStreetMap, which is a free map of the entire world. And uh, one of the difficulties uh, in the session was just having enough time to go through everything. Um, just because uh, what we do is very hands-on, taking out GPS and paper maps and that sort of materials and actually going outside which we didn't do here. Um, but I think there's a lot of enthusiasm and I'll be back in Jakarta, so we're going to do some mapping events to follow up so that people can learn a little bit more. Um, but uh, there's a lot of excitement because if a community creates their own map, they can plan for disasters and um, also advocate for themselves and things like that as well. TechCamp is the model that we're using to do that. So how do we apply this model? So we, the State Department, will work with our embassy here, the USA mission, different civil society organizations to help identify the civil society groups that are working with disaster management and or climate change, bring these organizations, bring these individuals that care about these specific areas to a tech camp. The caveat is that many of these organizations are what we would call analog civil society groups, meaning that they're not necessarily using the latest and greatest technologies. They even have the time, maybe not the money or the personnel to take advantage of some of the platforms that are really innovative in today's landscape. So we're bringing them here to Tech Camp to uh, introduce them to some technologists who are specialties in the field of disaster relief, climate change, etc. So we want to create a conversation where the civil society groups come here to the Tech Camp and are able and comfortable to share with us the problems that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. What are their problems? What are the bottlenecks that are preventing them for being the best, most resilient, most prepared organization in their specific field? We want to make sure that the technologists are hearing these bottlenecks and problems and are then able to suggest or help formulate tech-based solutions to these problems. Tech Camp is an unusual type of gathering in that our primary goal is to really help establish communities that don't necessarily yet exist. NGOs that have need, NGOs that are looking for ways that technology can support the work they do, Tech Camp is designed to create a space where they can learn about how technology can support and magnify the work they're doing and address problems and challenges they're facing in that work.
It's not like a traditional conference. In particular, Tech Camp is designed, first and foremost, for the least technical participants. We design the agenda to be question driven and we explain to those who bring technology knowledge that their worst mistake is sharing too much information. Instead, we try to create interactive session formats that allow the participants to clarify what they're trying to understand and put facilitators and trainers in a role of answering those questions and trying to craft appropriate explanations and appropriate solutions for those needs. Through the course of the day, we really try to get the participants to realize that they have control of their own destiny, and we convey a spirit of what we call constructive selfishness. We want participants to ask questions that benefit not only themselves, but those around them by describing challenges, by describing curiosities, and articulating needs that can then be addressed or explained or mitigated in ways that create greater understanding among all the participants. A successful tech camp not only helps people find new allies and realize that their problems are not unique or as isolated as they thought, but also creates a post-camp collaboration network where people know who to get in contact with when they want to make a crowd map, when they want to use SMS, when they want to apply social media strategies and tactics in their work. We're trying to create those relationships as we teach skills so that the event is only the beginning of what Tech Camp does in terms of impact. We'll help formulate tech-based solutions to these problems. A key part to this conversation is we're also including the private sector, so organizations like Google, Intel, Cisco, Aquapel, Lucent, Novartis, these organizations are part of the conversation, so they're able to hear firsthand what are the problem areas of on-the-ground, grassroots, civil society organizations. Right? So over the course of these two days of discussions, a tech camp, which is very, very hands-on, is very, very small group based. You can get away completely from the uh, presentation lecture type style conference and engage civil society organizations with technologists, with the private sector, and these conversations to identify the problem areas, the solutions, the tech-based solutions, and then give our private sector partners an opportunity to, kind of from a venture capitalist model, pick and choose the areas that they see as being most relevant for their own model and own social good efforts. And they can help uh, either through development time, funding opportunities, hardware, software application support, whatever it is that's relevant for them, they can help promote and facilitate solutions coming out of the tech camp. So that's what is a tech camp. Why do these people care? Obviously, if you're a civil society organization, you have a vested interest in understanding how can you do your job better. So part of the tech camp is just education based. How do you use technologies such as Ushahidi, such as OpenStreetMap, such as SMS to, to better uh, execute against your mission goals. So civil society has an interest in doing that. There's also that obviously the funding opportunities. If we can get a private sector sponsor, a private sector partner to work with these civil society groups and technologists to help promote their end goals, that's a great situation. That's what we're trying to facilitate. We're trying to create that environment of collaboration. Why would a technologist want to come to a tech camp? One of the great things that we found in the 21st century is this whole idea of uh, cognitive surplus. So people want to do social good. And the question has always been, well, I have this extra time, I have this knowledge, I want to share it, but I don't know how. And so what we're trying to do is tap into that goodwill of the technology sector and say, here, we have a, great, a model that we think allows you to tap into and do good things, contribute to the greater good, contribute to greater global resilience in the face of disasters, climate change, etc. And if you would like to, we want to open up that opportunity to you. So we have technology specialists such as Brian Herbert from Ushahidi, uh, such as Vaughn Hester from Crowdflower coming here to TechCamp Jakarta to specifically add value to, suggest, help guide, coach, teach civil society organizations on the potential. We want to look at what is the potential of technology to help these civil society organizations. From a private sector perspective, this is a great way both to help promote their brand name, but also 
to just do social good. They're, they have uh, social good programs and there's kind of this disconnect between their desire to contribute towards social good, but what's the best way to channel that energy, to channel those resources? And oftentimes you have this situation where if you put out uh, a request uh, to the global community, you, you get the same answers back. And it's kind of like the technologists are providing the solutions to the private sector. So what we're trying to do is to turn that into a venture capital model where private sector with technologists are able to be part of that conversation with civil society. The civil society is defining their own problems. Private sector and technologists are listening to that and they're catering the solutions and then the, the sponsorship, the funding, the follow-on engagement is there with the private sector partners. And so you have this nice continuum, this nice arc of the civil, the civil society groups defining the problems, working with the technology specialists on the solutions, and then the private sector partners on the tail end, helping to turn those problems and solutions into a reality. And the wonderful part about this whole uh, spectrum is that these solution sets are then posted to our uh, website techcampglobal.org for anyone in the world to see. So if a problem is in the solution that are coming out of Jakarta around disaster management uh, is relevant to an organization in Haiti, in India, in Argentina, then that organization can go into techcampglobal.org look at the problem, look at the solution, and then take bits and pieces as relevant, and then also contact the individuals responsible for that coming out of Jakarta to ask questions, maybe provide uh, follow-up information. Anyways, we're, we're very, very excited about the potential of the Tech Camp model. We've got Tech Camps uh, upcoming in uh, Lithuania and also in Moldova talking about civic engagement and open government respectively. There are another dozen tech camps upcoming over the uh, fall and spring of 2012 and we're really excited about the model and we're hoping that Jakarta and Indonesia is a great springboard to, to continue this effort. The campaign in Pal 
health to reduce maternal and neonatal mortality. Uh, but I have a challenge in working in the remote area where we have no communication uh, access. I mean, we have no signal for for internet. We have a difficulty to reach people in the villages. We have a difficulty to communicate intensively with people in the remote area. So I think we really need a kind of technology that could help us to link the community uh, among the community, the community with health provider, the community with midwife in the villages, the community with Save the Children's Worker. So, and yesterday, uh, through the tech camp uh, here in Ed America, I found a really interesting uh, solution from uh, Nico. Uh, he introduced me about the QChat. Um, so, well, I'm Nicholas from Instead, uh, and we have a tool that it's uh, called GeoChat. And we were doing a workshop with Irma trying to understand what were their needs and what we could uh, do to uh, help them do their work better. And we found out that GeoChat was very useful for them to communicate with their um, communities and stay in touch among their workers and be able to um, provide better healthcare to. Um, mothers and children and connect the midwives and the health clinics etc. So uh, I'm very happy to to have uh, met her.